I call the honourable member for Forest. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and, and I want to acknowledge <clears throat> the amount of work done by the Minister for Aged Care, Ken Wyatt. Um, he's very committed to the aged care sector, and we see that um, every time Ken speaks. What Ken wants to see is quality services, quality and services. That's what this bill is about. That's what the government is about. And when I talk to the minister, and when he has been into my electorate talking to people, seniors, what does he want to see? He wants to see happy, healthy, active, and people as active and as gauged as possible, irrespective of their age. That's what the government is working on. That's what the minister is so passionately committed to, and that's where he spends his time. He knows, the Minister for Aged Care knows, that how we treat our elderly people is a great reflection on us as a society. He is committed to aged care. And with our ageing population, planning and providing for that ageing population is increasingly important and also um, an opportunity that we've taken through this bill. The measures that we're taking will make it easier for people to make educated decisions about their aged care. The Aged Care Single Quality Framework Reform Bill is part of the government's uh, decisions to work with the sector to develop a new unified quality framework. This framework includes a single set of consumer focused, I'll say it again, consumer focused st quality standards which will apply across all aged care programs, making it simpler and easier for people. Help them to make really good decisions about their aged care. And this will apply to the Commonwealth, which will have consumers, of course, at its centre. This is what the Minister for Aged Care has always been working on, having uh, people at its centre and at its core. The Minister for Aged Care is absolutely committed to people who are needing aged care, giving them the tools to choose the best type of care for them and also the best type of care where they live. It's a significant shift away from the top-down institutional style level of information. It's part of the reforms being progressively implemented in the NH care to create very much that person-centred competitive system. Uh, a system where consumers will actually drive quality and where red tape, that evil red tape, is reduced for providers of aged care by providing for a single set of standards that apply across all aged care programs, there will be a range of achievements. These changes are intended to drive improvements, the improvements we all want to see in the quality of care delivered to older Australians. And secondly, they'll just decrease the, that regulatory burden on aged care providers. And thirdly, encourage, actually actively encourage, innovation, excellence and continuous improvement. Currently, the system of quality standards is complex. It's very, very difficult for, for ordinary people to understand and, and manage. There's four different sorts of standards, from accreditation standards, home care standards, transition care standards, uh, and the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Flexible Aged Care Program. All these uh, are different standards, they, and it's a part of the framework. With these amendments in this bill, provision will be made for the same set of quality standards to apply across all types of aged care services for the first time. And I congratulate uh, Minister Ken Wyatt for his work in this area. And the minister has listened to both consumers of aged care services and the providers of aged care. And the new standards will reflect the contemporary evidence and community expectations of the quality of care and services. It's the first time accreditation standards have been updated for 20 years. For 20 years, the first time. That's a great achievement for this government. And this will increase consistency across services, make it easier for consumers, as I said, and for their families, their carers and their representatives to make really good choices about that care and services and as they, their needs change. We'll focus on quality and safety for, for consumers, but encourage providers to offer care and services to promote quality of life and wellbeing. Place a greater emphasis on consumer choice and identity and the idea of partnering with consumers in the care that they choose. This is putting consumers fairly and squarely at the centre of the aged care process. 
And uh, we, can, we want to make, as the minister is very determined to do, to make what can be a difficult time in people's lives that much easier. Um, and this is very much part of uh, what the minister is, is dedicated to. I wanted to take this opportunity too to talk about some of the aged care facilities in my electorate that do provide very, very good care for people needing that level of care. And I want to talk about one in my hometown of Harvey called Hocart Lodge. And what's happened repeatedly in regional and rural areas? It's the community that's got together to actually provide aged care services and to provide a facility for people um, to, to live in. So uh, um, a residential care service often has been provided by the community itself where there was a need, Mr Deputy Speaker. And Hocart Lodge started as a small weatherboard home of a local family, the Hocart family in Harvey. And they donated that to the community because there was a need for residential care in the, for our aged citizens. And there were some local um, government um, representatives who were very committed to this as well, providing residential aged care in Harvey itself, where there wasn't any. And I remember at the time the community had the land donated to them by the Hocart family, but there was of course a lot of earthworks needed. And Mr Deputy Speaker, um, I must say it was my own father who provided that. He lived in Brunswick but knew in Harvey that we needed a central um, location and we desperately needed a residential aged care facility in Harvey. So um, because this was a community-led, community-driven, community-funded effort to provide this type of aged care service, the community drew on those that could provide all sorts of in-kind help and support. And my dad being an earth mover in the transport and logistics space with a lot of tractors and, and trucks at his disposal, he donated all of that to develop that site. It was a significant commitment. Um, three months, I think, he spent there working on the site and actually getting the site up to the standard that it needed to be to be actually built on. And that was the beginning. I see this repeatedly in my electorate where the community is the one that makes this happen. Years later, years later, when Hocart Lodge needed to be expanded, I'm very proud to say that it was my dad and my brother again that donated um, the gravel, the sand, the earthworks, and actually um, I think my brother spent six weeks carting sand out of what was then the, the rubbish dump area um, to actually provide the sand for this actual project. And so as a government we understand that the community actually gets involved and often drives what needs to be done in rural and regional areas. But it is the community, these are the people that we are there to serve um, and that's what we're doing through this bill, to better serve people and their needs, no matter whether they're in a, a city or whether they're in a small community like Harvey. And uh, I know that um, the, the one of the things that I'm particularly proud of as well in continuing perhaps, Mr Deputy Speaker, a family tradition is that uh, through the ACAR round, um, the uh, Hocart Lodge, uh, was when it needed to increase its capacity to 60 beds, received funding from the federal government, um, $11.23 million in capital grants to help them rebuild and expand. You can imagine just what it meant to me to be there for the opening of that new part of Hocart Lodge. Um, when I look back at what my father and my brother and the whole community had done, and then to see the federal government um, be able to support the next stage of providing wonderful residential care in a small community. Uh, that's what this government uh, does particularly well. And uh, there were people who'd been involved from day one. And, and I just wanted to mention a gentleman by the name of, of Gary Van Bergel, who was the chair of the voluntary committee that helped to run Hocart Lodge. And the other one is Ron Newby, who was particularly on the building side. He's a builder by trade. The, the skills and the passion that these two gentlemen brought to this project to make it happen over 10 years or more of work, because it took that long to get the momentum and for the, um, for the project to get to the point that it did. 
And I can only commend them on that extraordinary amount of care um, and effort that they put in. And the Hocart Lodge offers dementia care and, and various forms of health care. It's a 60-bed facility now, and it was developed in a couple of stages by a builder from, from Bunbury. The Perkins um, built this particular facility. And uh, when you see that this work is being done locally, uh, that's what really matters. The facility is provided to, to local families, and to have a, a, a reasonably local builder from Bunnery able to build this was even better. And uh, I look around at so many facilities. I look at Tuia Lodge in Donnybrook. Again, another fabulous community effort where this was driven again by the community. Uh, there wasn't, um, you know, there wasn't a provider that was in the space at the time, the community got together and said, we need aged care facilities in Donnybrook. And of course, it's named after the, um, the Tuia family that did so much in this space. And it's still offering wonderful, wonderful care. And I look right throughout, when you walk into these particular aged care facilities, it is like a home. It's a home for our people. It's a home for us when we get to that age. And I just think uh, it's so important that the government is supporting these types of facilities in rural and regional areas, so people can actually live in the communities um, that they've, they can actually find residential care in the community they spent their life in. People who have known them all their lives can come and visit. They can continue to be so much part of the community. Um, Ray Village in Cape Care, Ray, uh, Ray Village in Busselton is another one with such a strong community board and group that have fundraised to make a Ray Village what it is. And um, the Cape Care, with its permanent residential section, is just wonderful. I recently went there, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and uh, they've now got, as part of the residential aged care area, they've got their own coffee shop. So. Your family can come on in and you can actually um, go and sit down with your family member who's in um, uh, uh, Cape Care. You can sit there and have a coffee as if you were out in the community. Uh, it can, there's a section that's outside, there's umbrellas. It's a wonderful environment and it is, it is the home away from home. And that's the lovely part about what's provided by these wonderful residential um, providers uh, in so much of, of Australia. And I see this in my electorate repeatedly. There's one after the other of these um, residential aged care providers that's just doing a fantastic job. And the people who work in there are very committed to the residents. And I want to thank them for everything they do for the residents. Um, and they become very attached. And I know when my own mother um, died of the complications of Alzheimer's in a residential aged care facility, the people who'd looked after her most from the residential facility came to her funeral. They cared so much for her that they came to her funeral. And I, would, I respect that forever and I respect the wonderful care they offered my mother. And some of them, there were nights when I'd leave her and I'd think I'm so pleased that the people who are working tonight are there because they looked after her so beautifully. So, um, and, I, and I think of, of, of Waddle Lodge in Bunbury, again, another place offering very personalised care for people. And I think um, as, we, as we get older ourselves, we, we have to think, think very carefully about where we would want to be and what we want to do. And I've done a number of, um, of um, care, advanced care plan, planning processes with people. It's one of the toughest discussions you will have with your family about where you want to be and who you want around you and what options you have. But it's a very serious discussion that people need to have. And I would say, please, everybody, do your aged care and advanced care planning now with your families so that everybody knows where you want to be and what's right for you, what care you would like, where you would want to be, make sure the arrangements are all in place, the things you do and don't want, the treatments you do and don't want, so that you're actually making decisions. And if you're a young person, Please make those plans as well. None of us, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. So let's decide and let's put the plans in place because it takes so much of the angst and pressure off families if when we do get to a critical situation, our own plans are there to guide our families. 
so that they make the decisions we need them and want them to make, and they can do that in all confidence and know that they're reflecting the needs of what we as individuals want when we get to this point. So I want to thank all of those who are providing that level of care in my community. I thank the honourable member for Forrest.